futsal community. Uh, let's see if we can go live on Instagram at the same time. But futsal masterclass number four with Rafael Fogager and I. Rafa, I'm very happy to be here with you one more time. And this time we're going to be talking about corner strategies. Yes, Andrea. Glad to see you again. Happy to, to share this, this Sundays with you again, with the people talking about food sour passion. And especially today, a very interesting uh, topic, the, the set piece, corner set piece, very interesting and very decisive in the, in, the, in the games. Guys, if you have any questions, both on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, ask us a question, either Facebook or YouTube to show the screen. Okay, so if you have any questions, send us the questions. We're gonna be we're gonna be more than happy to answer any questions, guys. My hype, Rafa. Let's get it started. Corner strategies. Uh, before we talk about any specific corner strategy, what do you think that it's essential to have a, a good corner strategy? Andrea, uh, first, first of all, the the corner, the set pieces are actually responsible for uh, uh, around 35% of the goal. So it's obvious that it's very important. Uh, and to me, the, the most important things, the fundamentals of the, the corner kicks are, first, you, you have to know your players. You have to know who is the, who is the best passer you have, the player that can... Uh, control the, the the pace of the movement you know control the time control the sync between the pass and the and the other players uh, and his teammates so it's very important mm -hmm. to you to, to know who is who is the the passer in both sides of the the in the court the, the courts right uh as i say the 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 sync the pace between the passer and the players, the movements of the players, it's also very important. And uh, the dualities, you know, uh, you always have players that you, you see in the trainings. You see uh, there are some dualities be between players, especially between the passer and one normally one player. And mm -hmm. these dualities, it's uh, something very important to explore. And we, we have to, to find it out in the training to, to let the players do it in the game. Um, characteristics of the players, Andre, also very important. Uh, you have to know who is the passer, but also you have to know who is the, the player that has a better shot. I, I mean, uh, a medium range shot. Um, the player that can uh, Block, for example, some players they they are not able to block to make blocks. Some players they don't like exactly. to make blocks. So it's very important to know the players you have. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong. It's uh you need to find you need to discover who is the best passer for the corner strategies, and then you need to also see who is good at blocking, and see who is good at shooting, and place them in the correct positions. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Also, you were talking about dualities, Rafa. Uh, just to, to put in everyone's minds what dualities are, uh, I'm going to put a video here, just our first video of the day. Uh, if I just came from the corner, I had it here. You were, I, I just lost it. Dualities. Then you, check, then you check your, your Instagram because I sent you again the request to join you. All right, so let's see if you... I don't know what's going on here, but I'm not able to to join your 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 live man. It's been yeah, it's been funny. Uh, anyway, guys, so we're gonna just stay on YouTube and Instagram and uh, Facebook. So we're gonna no go on Instagram today. Jump on Facebook and YouTube. I'll leave my one play there. Uh, let's see dualities. I think I misplaced the video. Go, uh, this the one here. All right. So our first video of the day, duality. Andre Caro. I'm not sure what I got for. There it is. Unbelievable. So guys, just a short one. All these goals, they were not part of any corner strategy. They were just a duality between the corner taker 
and myself. Uh, I also had other videos of Ricardinho. He does that very often. Uh, we had a, we had a one here. I had a I some years ago, that, Andrea. But, a couple of years ago, we had a very good. Uh, uh, we had very good dualities between Falcão and Vinícius in uh, Orlândia in Intelli when they play together also in the national team, Brazilian national team. A classic mm -hmm. example. Falcão, Falcão and Vinícius. Uh, and also, Rafa, dualities, uh, these dualities between two players, there are many ways to do that. What about headers in futsal between the... Can, can that happen in, in a duality between two players? Yes, of course. It's one of the most common situations of dualities is the... the the high pass uh, into the box, to the, the mm -hmm. area, and the player uh, just heading the ball. Even because, Andrea, the, the players, the players are used to, to, to face... Sorry, Rafa, it, it no came problem, before, before we were talking here. Uh, yeah, go for it. So the, 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 the defense are used to face attacks that uh, use the, the low pass. You know the low pass, the pass in the ground. So they are always used to defend these kind of passes. And heading is not so common in futsal, you know. So mm -hmm. it's a, a good, good strategy, good surprise, as you can see here in the video. And in quality, Rafa, what's something that's very important? Uh, obviously, the the connection between the two players. But are there things that the players can do to help with this uh, connection? The time of the pass. What, what yeah. is something that these two players can do, the corner taker, you know? For Andrea, first I believe that dualities are very related to the, 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 the combination of the player, even out, uh, out of the pitch, you know, outside of the, the court. The players mm -hmm. must be friends. They must talk in the changing room and they must, must combine, you know, these, these uh, dualities uh, out of the court. And when they are mm -hmm. in the court, most of the time, they they used to to combine these movements, combine the the, the play uh, out of the pitch, and when they are in the pitch, in the training or even in the games, they they have a, 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 a communication in their eyes. You know, they look to each other and they know what they are going to do. So this yeah. is very important. And also, many players they are not expecting for that duality, even the teammates. They're not expecting. Huh? Uh, yeah. Also, is even before we go to call, to other corner strategies, uh, do you think do you think that sometimes it's worth it uh, taking a corner quickly before the other team sets up, or in what Very. do you think that's something that teams should actually train? You do you encourage your players to do that, or you say you always tell them to just wait and set up the corner properly? Andrea, it's uh, starting. Or, or having the, the corner in a, let's say, quick, in a quick way, is like score goes in transitions. It's always easier because mm -hmm. you don't leave the, you don't give time to the defense to, to get organized. So you, this gap, this lack of defensive organization in the time, we can explore as we, we have many examples, especially we can we can uh, remember that goal net score against Spain in the final of the FIFA World Cup. That's a classic, yeah. 2012, yes, the first goal of Brazil against Spain. So it's like transition, man. This we can call a transition in the in the in the set piece. Let's see if uh, if I can just skip forward to that goal here. That was Falco. Actually, that was the first goal from Brazil, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was the first goal, yes, first goal. That's this the one here? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so the ball goes out. His pace not setting up and... Exactly. It's like a transition. Exactly. And the interesting thing here, if we go back, is uh, if we go back to this point here. The player looking. The player looking, but also it's because yeah. Fernando is not in his position. So. Yeah. Now, uh, it's missing a player that this 
this player here, he cannot he, he cannot go out for the shot because if he goes, he opens the triangle. Yes, yes. And it's the triangle uh, yeah. is the most important structure in the zonal defense. So, Rafa, before we start talking about uh, corner strategies in, in many situations, just let's talk how, how you name the players in the face. So, so when we're attacking, we know which player to attack. So, if you can show on the board yes. how you yeah. yourself, you, you name each player in the face. Yes, of course, Andre. Let me just organize it here. So, always, the first player here, he's the number one. We call him number one. Number one, that one. Yeah. This one is the number two. This is the number three. And this is number four. So, when we talk about defend uh, to attack, movement to attack, defender number three, we are talking about attack the space that this player is controlling. And mm -hmm. this player is very important because he controls the center of the triangle. He's responsible for a very important line of pass, the, this, this interior, this inner uh, line of pass. This is this is very important line. And also to keep the, the triangle structure. Because if this, player's, if this player here, number two, if he moves, this player also have to move. And if the triangle opens, he is responsible to cover a, 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 a bigger area, more lines of pass. So mm -hmm. it's important the coordination between these three players. But this player here is a key player for the for the defense. Uh, uh, in, so you're a defense corner number one. That uh, not corner number one. The defense, the defender number one. What's what's his role? His role here is to help to close the the passes, the lines. Uh, inside the box, right? He's the one of the, the base of the, the pyramid. And uh, he's responsible to adjust after the pass, to adjust with the player that passed. What if that player, after he passed, he runs to the opposite side? You mean if this player pass here and run there? Exactly. So that player must, must follow him. He must follow him. It's his, uh, his... One question that I get all the time when, when we're coaching or we get players asking is, should that player stay on the line or one step away from the line? What do you prefer and, uh, and what, what will be the best option in your eyes? Andrea, actually, we have a different positioning for this player. There's not a rule for this player, right? So, uh, depending on your goalkeeper, depending on your, your model of defense in the corner kicks, this player can close more the line and the goalkeeper be responsible to close more the center. This player mm -hmm. can close more the center and leave the first post to the goalkeeper. The player can stay in the first post and leave the center to the goalkeeper as well, like uh, Diego Giustosi, he was uh, doing in El Poço in his first year when he he got the when he, he became the, the head coach of El Poço. So there are many possibilities for this player. The most uh, common is the player here one step away of the line and helping to close the, the, the center. This is the most common then, in five minutes. And then it's very interesting because uh, most of the teams defend with the player one step away from the line. And a lot of teams, and actually very recently, a lot of, a lot of teams have been using a corner strategy to attack the number one there. And they have been scoring lots of goals. So it's sporting, yes. uh, sporting the grand final just to score, just to score a few goals and uh, Halle Goik. So I'm going to put a, this next video up on the screen and then we talk about this first strategy, sure. Rafa. Sure. So let's just watch this one here. Let's start again. This one is Atlantico from Brazil. Yes. It happens very quickly, but so it's a pass along the line in a, in a flick. Back. This is Halle Goik. Belgium. And this one, I think it's pa Palma from Spain. Palma, yes, yes. Then the two sporting goals recently. The... And 
Mm. And we can say uh, the defenders made a mistake, but really the, the opposition is Benfica, it's teams from the first division in Spain, it's teams from the first division in Brazil. So I think the, the whole thing about uh, calling strategy is to surprise the opposition, correct? Yes, yes of course, correct. And, uh, and talking to Leitão, Leitão is a player from Halegoic, he was saying that they, they decided to do that calling strategy in the halftime, in the first half of the of that game, the other team was coming out for the volley, so they tried the volley many times, and then number one was coming off of the line a lot, and then they say, "Look, next corner strategy, let's do that corner that I go on the line and I flick back." Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's possible, it's possible. I, I, Andrea, I, I have something in my in my mind that I prefer all the corners give me at least two possibilities. The, the, the ideal is three possibilities for passing, but two possibilities mm -hmm. can work. And this corner is like uh, one note music. You have this ball and that's it. So in this case, I really, I really believe that it's a, a set piece that you have to surprise the, the opponent. You cannot use all the time. You will not use three, four times in the game. You're going to use one just, time. Just one yeah. time in the game, huh? Yes. And this one time is enough. Since you score and you win the game, it can be enough. Yeah, it's definitely uh, one that... Uh, it's definitely it's enough. Uh, so, Rafa, another corner to attack... So, this one is one corner to attack the number one. Yes. Can you can you give me or can you tell us one possi possibility to attack the number two defender? Yes, of course. Let me show you here. So we just we just saw a, a, a corner that you attack the number one because this is let's say his zone of uh, uh, responsibility. Where is the the zone of responsibility of the number two? This zone for short shot and this zone for long shot. In some cases, uh, this player is responsible for the player. It's a mixed defense starts in zone, but then it becomes an individual defense. So we have to, when we think about attack number two, we have to know his, the, the zones that he controls. And we have to attack there, that, that zone. So we can leave this player, we can ask this player to come here in round run, and attack the short space. Here we are creating doubt. If this player comes to, to block the shots, to defend, or if this player comes to defend. Normally, this player adjusts. And if this player is adjusting, he's closing the short shot. The, the, but he is letting this player, for example, leave the ball for the, the medium range shoot about 10 meters, and this player mm -hmm. must adjust. And normally this player is uh, uh, too much inside the box, and he's not able to go out uh, fast enough to block the shot. If he tries to go before, the passer has a one against one situation here inside the and box. And that's another question I want to ask you in front of everyone is, is there a rule of which player should go for the far range shots and which player should go for the short shots? Or it depends yes, on yes. each team? Depends on each team. There's not a one rule. It's about your defensive model of uh, corner kicks. If you mm -hmm. say, if you train and you, you, you decide to the number four, for example, he will be the responsible for all the shots in 10 meters in the center and opposite side. Let's call zone one, zone two, zone three. If he's responsible for zone two and zone three, he must go zone two, zone three. Or we can say, for example, if they make two against one, they create the superiority here. That's one of the, the, the targets for the attack, create superiority, especially against zonal defenses. If they create this two against one, this player will take the, the, the attacker, will check here, and this player will be the responsible to go or this player will keep the triangle and this player will be the responsible to go, or this player must leave and go and this player adjust. So it's about your team, about your players, how 
your players feel about the rule. I had this experience. We had this experience last year here in, in Al Nas. We mm -hmm. we gave a rule to the players that the, the player number three he should go out to, to block the shots. And the players asked us to change. They felt much more comfortable uh, adjusting for the short shot and letting the player, the defender number two, to go for the for the long shot. So and then in that case, even even if you as a coach have an experience that the, the, it's better if the number two goes or the number three goes, do you stick to your experience or do you accept what the players say? No, of course I have to accept because they are the, they are the players. They play. They have to feel confident. They have to feel uh, comfortable defending the way they think it's better as well. Of course, so guys. Let's watch. Uh, sorry, Rafa. Let's watch this uh, this set piece that we're talking about. Or oh, just started the video again here. Okay, so let's go. That's Brazil using that set piece. In this case, it's clear they don't know how to defend. No one went it's out. Clear. And that's Italy in the World Cup, huh? So it's yeah. it's very clear that when this player comes around here, they don't know who should go out and who should stay there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have the set piece a few more times. It's Magnus. Yeah. Again, very clear. And that's Minas in this uh, National League right now. Exactly. Same problem of Palma. Now you see it's not so clear because you see the defender number two. He's the one that goes for the shot. He goes late, but he's, he goes. He goes, but when the player comes in front of him, he uh, he first tries to block the shot of the, the of yeah, the player in front yeah, of him. Yeah. Then he... yeah, like he has a double responsibility, you know, Correct. to block the short and the long. But you can see a rule there. Uh, it's rough. It's a feeling that I have that uh, it's very hard to create new strategies. Everything pretty much has been created. Does that have anything to do that when you're attacking, you're always attacking one of these spaces? So if you are, you can attack the space of the defender number one, you can attack the, the space. So just to make that a little bit more, um, I'm going to share this screen now here. So we can attack the, this space here, or we can attack this space, or we can attack the back of the space and also the second post, the back post. Is that a is that a, a correct statement that it's very hard to create new strategies? Andre, there are spaces and lines that you can attack mm -hmm. because some uh, some some space they are closed by the defense especially the zonal defenses for example the zonal defense what's the 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 target for the zonal defense close the spaces inside the box they let the the the, the game happens uh, outside so against zonal defense you're gonna have this zone short shot this zone this zone this zone and then we go to you my know, next question is Strategies to attack a zone of defense and strategies to attack individual defense. Exactly. Absolutely different. Absolutely different. So in the zones, for uh, because of the nature of the zone of defense, you're gonna have the external shots, like 10 meters shots from the mm -hmm. zone central or, or opposite zone. You're gonna have okay. That's a point. Uh it's important when you when you attack. Uh, uh, zonal defense to try to create superiorities. What I mean, for example, if this player here is the responsible, for example, for this zone, second post and the, the, the external shot, if you put two players here, he doesn't know who he must defend. It's two against one. Mm -hmm. And as we say, this structure, this triangle, it's very important to keep closed. So if this player goes out here, he's opening lines. And here we already have space, have lines between two, between one and goalkeeper, we have a line. Between one and three, we have a line. Between three and two, we have a line. So in some models of defense, 
uh, I can tell you, for example, there is a Spanish coach called David Marin. He worked in Italy. He worked in Spain. Now, he was working in, in uh, Kuwait. I don't know if he's still there, but he was working there. He asks this player to control both lines between one and three and between two and three. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of responsibility for this player. So uh, uh, not only the spaces, the space and the lines between players. You know, this is space inside, space in second post, uh, space for long shots. So there are at least, we can say, one, two, three, four, five, six spaces, important spaces to attack, six or seven, if you want to attack the, the number one. You have seven spaces to defend, and here you have at least two inner lines of passes between one and, and three and two and three, and uh, external shots. This is against zonal defense, right? So uh, it's important to attack these spaces and lines. Of course, you're going to use some movements to, to uh, trick the defense. Mm -hmm. And also, you, 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 it's very important as well to talk about this, Andre, because we are used to, to attack, to, to shot in the first ball, like this player pass and this player shot. But, but against zonal defenses, after the pass, the defense must adjust and change the references between zonal references to individual references. And then, Rafa, we go... Uh, let me just illustrate what he just said. Now I'm going to put this corner strategy here from Himber in Spain. So let's go here. This, uh, it, it was a very, very interesting corner because uh, the coach from Himbe at that time was Andre. Andre was uh, covering, he was the coach from Himbe. And he called, he called the timeout to organize his strategy. And he spoke about it. He said, let's pass the ball back. Let's make a block on the other side. So we, we take this time of the adjustment. Exactly, exactly. So and then we also have... That... Yeah, go for it. No, no, tell, tell me. Sure. So I'm going to show one more uh, corner strategy for this uh, after the pass here. Yeah. And again, the same one. Mm. So it's very interesting yeah. what he's saying that not necessarily you have to attack the first ball, you can pass the ball back and use this time that the defense has, have to adjust from uh, a zonal defense to an individual main to main defense. Yes, Andrea, this is what I noticed uh, in my career. Um, many, it's also important when you, when you build your team to have one or two movements for this, let's say, second or third ball. You know, it's also important to build this in the press season, to have this option. When you need in the game, the, the players, they are able to, to do. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, do you have uh, questions in the, in the chat? Scene? Unfortunately, no one has asked us any questions just yet. Uh, I have a few questions, but they're not related to actual the corner strategy, so I'm not showing them. This one here is, uh, this guy here is talking about, yeah, this guy here is talking about my game last Friday, so I'm just going to skip this one. Uh, Rafa, again, he's still talking about zonal defense. His strategy is to attack that third and fourth player. Yes, uh, Andrea. Keeping the, the, keeping the idea about the, the zonal defense. Create superiorities. So, movements to attack the number three and number four. Every movement that you uh, make the movement, changing or crossing, running behind number three, 
and this player in the second movement, let's call, comes in front of this player, they use this number three, he used to move, to adjust. So there's a possibility here, a movement, that we can attack the, the number three, especially this line between number two, number two and number three. This movement, we call round movement. This player mm -hmm. goes, this player comes, and this player is coming back. And he goes again. And this player comes. You know? Got it. This is Got it. This, this movement. Go, come. And he's he keeps going. And he goes again. And he comes. It's a, a, a long movement. But because it's long movement, this number three, he used to move. See. So let's uh, let's see if we, uh, just from what you're talking, let's see if I if it's the one that you're saying. Yes, yes. So that player goes, comes back. Yes. And that's when the confusion that happens, huh? Yes. Yeah. The, the, this corner strategy is just a simple uh, switch, but this will be more for individual defense. Yes, exactly. But even uh, sometimes, like this, this one here. Now the defense was zonal. Zonal defense. They are attacking the line between the number two and the number three. Yeah, but it's interesting to see here, Andrea. Number four, the defender number four. He's in a position that he's not covering the number three. He's not covering anyone. He's like uh, being careful about the the center of the the box or second mm -hmm. post, but but also the triangle is open between number number two and number three. See the space. See the positioning of the number three. This one here, again, the same set piece, but against an individual defense. Individual defense. Uh, defense they make a block, they follow. Yeah. Again, against a zone of defense. But there is a... There is a good one coming up. And he just swings in, checks in, and bangs it away. Let's have a look at it. Uh, against a zone of defense again. Feet, yes. And uh, the, the interesting thing about this one, that, that player, this player number six, he goes block the defender number four there. Yeah. So he goes block the number four, and the, the ball goes between the two and three. Yeah. Because the references or the defense, they are most individual references. And this is Halle Goik again in, in Belgium. Uh, they do this very often. And what's, in, what's uh, I think it's a little detail that makes big difference in foot. So it's, it's kind of a, a theater. You have to pretend that you're not going to shoot. You have yes. to act like uh, you're not going to be the one to shoot. And later on, the player from, from Halle Goik, he does that very well. So you look at him, he's just... He's just there, quiet. And then at the right time, he just moves into the space and scores. And, uh, and Andre, and the rhythm, and the sync between the passer and him, you know, it's in the right time. Exactly. Uh, so that was one strategy. Rafa, what about volleys? How yeah, often volley do we use volleys? Very useful against zonal defense, especially uh, to attack the, the defender number three and number four, especially. I like, I prefer, Andre, to attack the defender number four. Why? Mm -hmm. Because if something here happens and this player reaches the ball or this player even go out of the block and reaches the ball, he, he is going in a one against my goalkeeper situation. So from a corner kick... I have the initiative for the corner kick, and it's very important. One of the reasons for the attack to scoring a lot of goals, you have the ball without pressure, and you have the initiative. So I lose my initiative, my moment, my, my opportunity, and I give a counter-attack, one against goalkeeper situation. So to me, it's very dangerous. I had experience when I was in Gitz Passan, we had a, a corner set piece like this, and we were winning the game 1-0 against Arjan in a city called Shiraz. And in the last, I think it was 30 seconds to, to finish the game, 
we tried this movement and they cut the ball and they had one against goalkeeper counter attack. Thank God our goalkeeper saved, but we could receive the goal and we could even in, in that case uh, uh, draw the game. So my experience, this volley here. Yeah, that's let's be correct. This is the defense. The volley here for the central zone is mm -hmm. very dangerous. Better to avoid. But here is here is okay. Here in opposite side is okay. So we so can let's one, it's one. One. Yes. So yes, exactly. It was uh, our, our team. Is our team last season a volley behind yeah. there. Barcelona does this very often, right? Right, yeah. Rafa. Right. I think this is a uh, simple movement. Barcelona again. And again. Okay, the, here we have a good detail is uh, Hale Goik. They do this perfectly. Uh, and the name of this player here uh, is that player that Brazilian they used to play for El Pozo before. What's his name, Rafa? I don't know if you remember him. Uh, Grelo. Brazil Grelo, Grelo. Correct. Yeah. And he does that perfectly. First of all, he has a great pass. But yes. after every time he passes, you see that as soon as he passes, he goes to the second post. Yeah. And the interesting thing here, in the same game, they scored two goals. Is This is the, the same game, Rafa. First half, the, the goal. And now in the second half, Grelo twice. And yeah. two times, running to the second post and tap it in. Hey, you have to give orange juice for the defense, for the number one. Defender <laughs> number one wasn't the, the beach. Uh, and, and here's a, a good example that I talked to you, that it's very hard to create new movements. Even though this uh, this movement looks like it's it's another movement, it's again it's very similar. It just they start in different positions, they make movements, but the final result is the same. So yeah, look, it's a, it's a side ball, right? It's a side ball. Correct. Yeah. But Andrea, the the most important is to understand the space the space that you can attack, and then you can create, you can uh, copy. Doesn't matter. The spaces are there. According to the defense, you're going to reach this space before the defender or not. So that's why we have this sensation, this feeling, Andre, that everything is already done. It is. It is. If you take, for example, there are some movements that work. And we were talking about this these days. I When I, when I was a project of player, I scored a goal. When I was under 17, I scored a goal using a movement that after some years disappeared for some years, and now it's back. This movement is back. It's working a we'll lot. Get, we'll, get to that, we'll get to that movement next, but let's just, let's just finish with this one quickly. Here we have a variation. I'm going to make a full screen that the player blocks, and because the defender tries to get out of the block, the ball gets passed to the player that blocks. Yes. Number three moves. Open the triangle. So I'm going to watch that just one more time quickly. All right, so let's talk about you when you were younger, Rafa. Well, what was that mm -hmm. goal that you say that you scored and, and you haven't seen that set piece in a while and it's back now? Andrea, the corner, the movement I was saying, it was, we, we did it. I think it was 1998 or 99. I don't remember, it was a lot of years ago. And it was one way to attack the space between number three and number two, right? So especially this space, how to create this space? So the movement we were doing was this player here, he fins and he come behind mm -hmm. in this space. The, this player pretend that he's coming for shoot to push this player to open, to close the shoot. This player come inside between these two players. This pass comes 
he makes the, the role pass back, backwards, and this player mm -hmm. shot. This player also is important because he must open to pretend for this player that he's going to volley. So this player also going to adjust his position to open this space here. Fint, pass, backward pass, rolling the ball, and they finish. I, I told you, in my time, it's been a long, long time ago, we used this movement. Then this movement disappeared. And now we are watching uh, some goals from this movement. So let's watch that the, what they say. Here is a very old one. The, the classic Inter movie star using the movement with Beton rolling the ball back. Mm. It's very interesting that we used to see that movement a long time ago and it's coming back now. We still see the same set pieces working over the years. It's very interesting that Portugal didn't start in the same formation. They start in a different formation. They moved, but really the results are the same. Because they are attacking the same spaces. The important the is spaces. to attack the spaces. Whatever, how, how doesn't matter how you're going to move, man. The important is who's going to be there. The space is more important. This one here is uh, Magnus. At that time, they used to be called Sorocaba, Brazil Kirin. Yeah. And there is still a, a few happening, but uh, what's the, 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 the advantage of this uh, set piece? Could be the counter attack, right? So if you lose the ball, it will be a, a two against one, three against one. Yes. This is this, this one of the disadvantages also is it's like a one one uh, one note music as well because maximum you can do after is the player that comes for backward pass attacking the space between number two and three he can give the pass back and this player that pass uh, attack the ball and pass the ball to the second post it's a possibility as well but we'll be talking about this set piece next coming up that's yeah. uh, that's one option for this, yeah. That's one one solution, a yeah. variation for the corner strategy. Yeah. Yes, but also uh, against a, a defense that's waiting for this movement, it's hard to 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 work out. You know, it's again surprise, surprise, surprise. One of the 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 most important factors in the in the set piece. Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk the, the feeling I have, Andrea. We can talk here 10 hours about set pieces, and we're gonna get back to the same point. Sync uh between the passer and the the players that move. Dualities, attacking the spaces, whatever the movement you do, it doesn't matter. Uh, who gonna move where, how long it takes. You you have to attack that space. And the 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 options that the movement gonna gives you. We're gonna talk ten hours here. We're gonna always come back to the same, you know. Rafa, uh, so the importance of the pass, the corner taker, the shooter. It's super important to have someone that can pass the ball, and it's super important to have a shooter. When you play a team, when you play a, a your at the preseason, do you do you consider that? Do you, do you try to sign players that? Uh, that can shoot in those positions, or is that something that you consider when you build a team? Andrea, Andrea, when you come, when I when I come for a new new team, okay, here in Anasir, it's my third year, so I know the players, I know who is the passer, I know who is the shooter, okay. But when I go to a, a, a new challenge, a new club, when start the season and you start the the short training you see who is the player that has a good shot. You see. Mm -hmm. And also, you see the initiative of the players when you are training. Who is going to take the ball for passing? You know, who is going to take the ball for passing? So, you know, probably this is this guy, he likes the, the, the responsibility to be the passer. 
you know. And let's see, maybe we have another player with very good capacity, but not that's not showing off. So in the training, you watch what oh, this player he is he has a good pass, he is intelligent, uh, he is let's say cold to think, to analyze what's going on and decide well, making the right decision. Mm -hmm. You you watch this in the training, and of course, you have training specific training for set pieces. And in these kind of trainings, you're gonna check it out. You're gonna see this player, mm, he's good passer. This player is good passer, but we have one even better than this player. You know, and you see everything in the training, Andre. In the training, you see everything. Uh, Rafa, I'm gonna put you on the spot now. If, uh, if you don't wanna say only one, you can pick two players or three maximum. But if you could remember your whole coaching career, the top three shooters from corners and the top three uh, volley kickers and the top three corner takers. Oh, for sure, for sure. The best one for volley or for shots was Mehdi Javid from Iran. Sure. It's like he's going to shoot 10 balls. Probably he's going to shoot 10 balls in the, in the goal. And maybe he'll score seven. It was the the his numbers, you know, in that time. Uh, we had one player also in Iran, Mohammad Shajari. He was very good also for volley, very good player for volley. He scored one goal against Mes Sungun, I remember. Uh, you know, it's not normal you you score volley with the inner face of the, the foot. With the side he of the foot. To, yeah, he used to to use the, the the inner face of the foot, man, for, for volley, you know. So he developed that technique and it, it's working. I don't know now, but it was working in my time. Uh, yeah. These two guys, Mohammed was right foot and Mehdi was left foot player. For passing the ball, we had last season, I remember in my career, I, I, I don't know, but we had, and it's, it's a, a cool to say, because the people, they don't expect this from UAE, but we had one player called Bader, Bader Ibrahim. He was very good player for passing these balls in the corner kicks. Very good player. He, he, he was like amazing, you know, he was... Uh, smart enough to wait the, the right time to watch what's going on. And we also have, we still have Mohamed Obeid. He is the passer, especially in the right side. And uh -huh. man, most of the, the goals we scored from corner kicks, he was involved as shooter or as passer. So even from UAE, the people, I don't know, how much the people know about the, the UAE futsal, but yeah, it's possible to find here players that uh, are very efficient doing doing this stuff, like passing, shooting. Uh, in Brazil, I remember I had a player, now he's playing Jaén from Spain. His name is Felipe Mancha. He was, oh, he's top three, like easily, top three as, uh, uh, as a, a passer in the corner kicks. Top three, easy, easy. Very good player, very good player. And, you know, uh, he had, he still have all the characteristics for, for being the leader of the team to, to, to control these moments when you have the ball uh, and you have to take the initiative take the, the initiative to, to make the, to control the, the, the scene, to the rhythm, the pace of the movement, you know, and to find the best solution in a very fast decision. So he was amazing. Uh, from now, I could say, I could say to you, these players, Mehdi Javid, Felipe Mancha, Badr and Mohamed Obeid, very intelligent players, very technical players. And Rafa, uh, just something that we haven't spoken yet, attack against individual defenses. 
obviously yeah, most of the teams nowadays they defend they defend zone or or a mixed zone. But yes. if you have a zone, uh, an individual defense will be the the secret for you or the most important. Against individual defense, Andre, attacking against individual defense, uh, it's the same concept of attacking a, a positional defense. It's very important to use some means, some uh, offensive means. Blocks, uh, crossovers between players cross, between players. Uh, fins, it's uh, not even a mean, a offensive tactical mean, it's an individual mean, offensive mm -hmm. mean, create space to fin. So for the defense, is you, you, you get much more vulnerable. But I don't know if you have a video about this, but Movistar, Inter Movistar, they are used to defend individual defense years. Then they stop it. Last two, three years, they stop it. And this year, they are back defending. And it's very hard to score because it's a, a, a mix between starting in a zonal position to close mm -hmm. the, the center of the box. And then just before the pass, the players, they adjust for the, the players. So it makes the things... Uh, harder to, to attack, it's working well, but uh, that's my answer. Use the you talk about means and, and tactical means, group means. You talk about Barcelona and the, the movie star, but uh, what's interesting here, it's the opposite. Barcelona, I, I think it's probably the was the, the uh, yes, but it was probably the only time I have ever seen Barcelona defend so much individual like that. Really, main to main defense. And it's interesting what your movie star did here. Mm. They did everything you said in one, in one strategy. They did uh, movement to, to make the player follow. They did block. They, they rotated. They did the second yeah. rotation. They did so much. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's a rotation, but the second player of the rotation he he stops and and block the defender of the first player. See, yeah, there's uh, a there's a change in the defense. Now they get, yeah, and they get a shot on target. Huh? They get a shot. Yeah, so you, you get a shot. It works. I believe, Andrea, you have to train your team when you build your, 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 your team. You have to train your team to attack zonal defense, at least two movements, individual defense, at least two movements, and their variations, of course. Uh, you, have to, you need to have, it's important to have movements that you attack, the, the, the movements that the defense is adjusting again, changing, from the zonal defense to individual defenses. And you have to give to, the, to your players always the possibility to make surprise, to create something new and do this something new. You know, it's very important. So talking about the training, you were talking, uh, you say training, you have to train your yeah. team. How would you train your team to, what's, uh, what's an exercise or, do you train? Do you start analytical? Do you do you do? Do you have game situations to train corner strategies? What will be yeah, some ways that you? How do you train your team? Andre, it depends on the on the on, on the level of the players you have, of course. In my case, here in Al Nasser, uh, when I introduce, even in Gitz Passan was like this in Brazil. When we introduce a new movement. We show the, the movement in video or in the board. Then we go to the pitch. We do analytical exercise without defense, only with mm -hmm. obstacles like cons or something like this. We train in this. This is the, the methodological sequence, let's say. Then we put a defense, passive defense. Then we uh, let the defense uh, be active properly and mm -hmm. we give a space for the players to give another solutions inside that structure we give this space right after that we always have games we always training and most of the time we training 
since we started the, the analytics call to introduce the new movements, then we're going to train only in game situations. So how are we going to do that? For example, uh, five against five, I mean, four players plus goalkeeper, five against five in 20 by 20 meters, right? All the time the ball is going out, especially if you, if you put some rules like two touches. When you put some, these kind of rules, uh, the number of side balls, corner kicks, you're going to have, they are a lot. So we decide every time the ball is going out, it must restart in a corner kick. So we create this possibility. And in these kind of games, I like to say, for example, you have four minutes game. You, can, you, you only can use number one. And they say, coach, but the defense, no. Yes, but you have at least three possibilities. Explore your possibilities and create inside your possibilities. So you understand? So from this uh, rule, you push the players to create inside that movement. They, can, they are not allowed to change the structure, to change the movement, but they can change uh, the end of the, the, the movement. Understand? So from this, mm -hmm. sometimes you even increase, you even improve your movement. You make it better from the training, from the solution that the players are giving to you. And then I change. Then I, four minutes now, only number two. The same. Coach, but they know it's getting hard. Okay, it's hard. It's not easy. So, but methodological sequence is that. We show the movement. We train analytical without defense, only obstacles. We train with passive defense and active defense. And then we go to games and we training for uh, all season long we train the the set pieces in in game situations uh and to train this duality between the taker and the and the the corner taker and the shooter would us would a game like this to uh 20 by 20 on a, on a 20 by 20 but instead of five against five we do uh three against three and the defense yes. must be individual would that would that yes. be something more that would work as well you can let the defense also be in zone. That's okay. Since you have only two players inside, the possibility to have a, a duality is higher. Very. You have less passes. You have less mm -hmm. uh, possibilities. So if I have only you and me, what we are going to do? Find a duality. If I have me, and uh, me, you, and another person, I, I still have possibility to find a duality, high possibility, let's say, uh, between me and one of you guys. But if I have three, I have three options. So this possibility is still, but much less than if I have only you and me. And I like, I like to do sometimes this. I, I let one against one, right? In the in the in the game. It's a game uh, small sided game, 20, 20 by 20. One against one inside and four balls, one ball in each corner. And this player he has to feint and try to to finish to shot in one touch you know mm -hmm. so also also we have this we have many many exercises to to explore and to train in the the duality that's really good uh i think we cover every aspect of the corner strategies attacking defense defense we didn't talk as much as attack but we we cover so much uh if anyone has any questions send us send us your questions now if not, we're gonna start. We're gonna start finishing that off. Uh, Rafa, anything else to add to corner strategies, or that's it? Uh, if you remember teams that you had in the past, they score a lot of corner strategies. The difference it was the strategy or the players that you had. Andrea, the difference is the combination between players, strategies, and training. And believe that you have to believe on your set pieces and the players must believe in your set pieces otherwise it will not work so sometimes you have six movements six set pieces movements but the, the team they only use two because they don't feel confident about two movements so it's better to change the other four mm -hmm. or let the players do that two they are confident or training that uh, another four movements to the players get confidence on the movement. So confidence is very important as well. Uh, for everything, for a player, for a team, for the coach, it's very important to have confidence. What I, 
I, I, from where I learned a lot from was from El Pozo in the time that Duda was the, the coach, the head coach. To me, in my opinion, it was the, the best team I have seen using the set pieces. They create a lot. They, mm, they had many variations. They had very good players as well. So from my experience... I learned a lot, a lot from, from Duda, from El Pozo in Duda's time. That's good to hear. So, guys, uh, we thanks everyone for joining our Futsal Masterclass number four, Corny Strategies. Uh, if you join just now at the end, go back to the video, watch again, watch all the set pieces we put up, what, listen to everything we said. Everything will help you guys so much. Rafa, thank you again. I look forward to the next one. Yes, Andrea. Andrea, also... I, if someone, for example, after watch the video and and needs to wants to to uh, make a question to ask something, I think we should create a possibility for this person to to leave the question, and I don't know maybe in another situation during the week we can make a short live only to answer these questions. You know, it's a possibility. Mm -hmm. It's a possibility because it's about time. Some people, they don't have time to, to, to watch live and they watch later. And these I, I'm saying because I have friends uh, in Brazil that they say to me, Rafa, I can understand, but I don't know how to ask because I, I, I can't. I can't uh, ask. Sometimes they don't feel comfortable asking. And they say to me, why don't you uh, make another live during the week just to answer the questions? So it's not my idea. It's, uh, I don't know. It's an uh, idea from, from the people. And we, we can talk about, we can, we can see. Sometimes they don't feel comfortable uh, to ask live, you know, but they can. Yeah, we'll definitely questions. do that. So if anyone has any questions, leave your questions there. We'll answer in the next Futsal Masterclass, no problem. Uh, yes. And also, I think that we have a lot of people in Portuguese as well. So soon we're going to have to start talking Portuguese. Lots of Brazilians yeah. following us. Yes, yes, we can do. We can do in English. We can do in Portuguese. I don't know how to speak Portuguese and English. So that's okay. Oh, we're doing Persian as well. That's not a problem. Yeah, we do Persian. I, I pretend I speak everything, but I don't speak anything. So that's it. Guys, thank you so much for joining in. We'll see you guys in the next one. See you guys.